Hello visual effects people, I'm AK, this is Fluid Ninja and this time I would like to show you four minor tricks. I'm going to the content examples level, starting Fluid Ninja and uh, as you could see this uh, Pyro 4 flame setup is loaded by default. Have a look at the output density. It is kind of already stylized, so it doesn't look like a realistic fire at all. And you might have noticed there are filters at the density option called sharpen and sharpen size. Uh, I might uh, set these values higher and higher and as you could see uh, the sharpen is affecting the look of this fire thing. If I uh, feed a, a negative value to this field it is starting to blur the thing. But whatever I do uh, the basic look of this uh, flame fluid simulation doesn't really change. So what if I uh, export this as a flipbook and I'm um, um, saving this flipbook to a PNG file and uh, using uh, an image manipulation program like Krita or Photoshop to filter it. Yeah, I could filter my flipbooks. Have a look at this one. I was um, adding a contour detection and in this case I was combining uh, the contour detection image with the original image. Have a look, before and after. Uh, what I would like to suggest is uh, once uh, a flipbook is a single image, you could do any manipulation or filtering on it uh, in a third party software and pull it back to Unreal and then you could heavily uh, manipulate the look of your effects. So what you cannot do in Ninja, you might be able to do in Krita or Photoshop and then use it the same way as a flipbook. Uh, the second thing I would like to show you is um, that um, the look of the fluid simulation is heavily influenced by the frequency of the input data. Here uh, we have this um, very chilled, slowly flowing smoke thing. And as you could see, the emitter is almost like a single dot. There's nothing happening here. Um, and the result is like a continuous uh, column of smoke. Now have a look at these guys. You might have spotted them already. Um, <laughs> the input field is a very high frequency changing particle system it is putting out a different setup on every on each tick and you might notice that uh, the result in the fluid simulation space is a very turbulent and a bit more realistic smoke column so what i wanted to suggest is uh, that you might want to use high frequency input in case if you would like to get more realistic results it's not super realistic but it's definitely uh, a bit more <laughs> realistic than the smoke that we already had, these slow flowing, low frequency guys. Okay, the next trick, the third one I would like to suggest, is that you take this option in the record mode, Atlas, and then it changes to sequence. And once you do this, you could set up an arbitrary number of frames, it could be 500 frames, and then you press the record button, and it is exporting uh, the fluid simulation into an image sequence that you could use later on in uh, After Effects or Premiere or uh, any other uh, motion picture manipulation software. So you're not limited to use flipbooks and inside Unreal, or Unity or Blender where people use flipbooks. Uh, you could export uh, your fluid simulation into an arbitrary sequence and use it in a post-processing software or compositing software. 
And finally, there's one more thing I would like to show you. I'm going uh, back to this um, use cases level. I'm going down to these vector field examples. Mm -hmm. And I would like to show you what happens when you're not using um, a static vector field, but you starting to rotate it. Uh, the thing is that once you generate a vector field with Ninja, you are able to create uh, such a setup. Let me uh, pick this particle system, find it, open it in Cascade. Ah, yeah, here we go. So, what I have done is, uh, of course, I have added a local velocity field module, and then I set up a rotation rate. As you could see at the z-axis, we have a value enabled. And um, as you could see, the whole vector field is rotating. And that is a very good trick uh, to make your uh, GPU particle system a bit more turbulent. If you have a look at these particle systems that we have on the Ninja examples level, mm, yeah, this guys, for example, it's just a static vector field and it's no rotation and it's very boring. While in this case, have a look at this guy upstream. Uh, we have the vector field rotating around two axes. And the result is a very diverse, unpredictable motion of these GPU particles. So I'm using the Ninja generated uh, vector fields and I'm also rotating them on a constant rate and this makes the whole thing a bit more interesting, exciting. Well, yeah, that's uh, what I wanted to tell you about. And thank you for your patience and see you next time. Bye-bye.